In this presentation, we will enter bills and pay those bills within QuickBooks Online. Here we are. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. In our Get Great Guitars file, we're going to go up top and look at our objective by selecting the plus item up top. We're going to go into the vendors section. We're going to enter our year in or month in, I should say, month in bills, things like the phone bill, the utility bill, things that we typically would pay at the end of the month, whether a business or personal. And we're going to do that. We did that last time by just simply writing a check. We're going to we imagine we have our pile of bills for the month. We are then paying them and writing a check. That would be on a cash basis. This time we're going to enter those bills into the bills and then pay them using the pay bills system. Now, this is going to be a little bit different. It's a two-step process. You may ask, why would you do that? Well, if you hit, if you enter just the check, then we're entering the check and writing the check at the same point in time. So if you're doing it at the same point in time, writing the check at the same point in time that you are entering it, then you may just want to write the check. If, however, you're going to be entering the bills as you get the bills, instead of just piling them up with a paper bills, you want to enter them into the system, use the system to help you determine which bills are due, and then also use the system to be able to print all those bills at the same time, meaning we can then decide which bills we want to print, write checks for them, and then allow the, the system with the pay bills feature to pay them all at the same time. Then this kind of two-step process would be a process we would use then. What we'll do is we'll enter the bills. So we're going to enter the bills up top. The form will look a lot like a check. But remember, when we enter a bill, the journal entry is always going to be increasing accounts payable. That's what the bill means. When we enter a bill into QuickBooks, it doesn't mean any bill because we could pay any bill with the form in QuickBooks of a check. We're using the bill form in QuickBooks rather than the check form when we're entering something that we want to increase into accounts payable, which we're going to pay later with a check a special kind of check however than the pay bills so the bills are going to increase accounts payable some other account usually an expense and then the other side will be the pay bills which is in essence a check however the pay bills are going to be specific forms for quickbooks because they mean that these checks these specific checks these pay bill checks are reducing accounts payable they're connected to the bill the form that we entered into the system so let's do that now. We're going to enter some bills into the system. The first one's going to be the phone bill. We're going to pay to Verizon. So I'm just going to type in Verizon. We could select the drop down and look for the vendor. I'm just going to type in Verizon and it should populate. There it is. We'll select that item. Tabbing through. We don't need an address. We'll keep that as is. I won't put the terms here, although it would, well, we could put terms. Terms. So let's put net 30. So it's due in 30 days. And these terms could be determinate, of course. If we look at the actual bill, and we may not want to put terms, but simply put the due date that is on the, the bill. We're going to say that the bill date is going to be 022819, uh, and that 30 days later will give it the due date. Again, you may just want to, if the terms are not standardized on the bill, you could just enter the due date, whatever it is due for, because we can use this then to sort these bills and pay them as they become due. Then we're going to scroll down and we just want to add the categories. The category we will add in this case, this is going to be the account. It's going to be the telephone bill. So we're going to say, is there a telephone expense? We could try to type this in. Telephone expense. There it is. That's what we want. Now note we paid Verizon in the past and you might ask, well, why didn't it auto populate? Why didn't it help us out to then categorize the bill or the category or the account? And the reason is because we did it last time with a check. We haven't written a bill yet. So if we had written a check, it would most likely have populated the amount for us and the category. So, so we wouldn't have to memorize that or, or put it in place again. It'll help us to say, hey, this is what you did last time. You probably want to do something similar. On the description, we won't put a description. If you do put one, it's always a good thing to put a description on which bill it is or when it's due for, what the period's covered, maybe what it's covering in the bill some descriptions about the bill and the amount we're going to say is going to be 365 that's going to be it when we enter this bill it looks like a check but it's a bill the bill means accounts payable will go up the other side will be increasing the expense account in our case of course the telephone expense so we're going to enter another one here we're going to say save and new save and new 
The next one we're going to say is going to Spectrum, which is our internet. We're going to say we buy internet from Spectrum. So Spectrum is a new vendor. I think that's how you spell it, Spectrum. And so we're going to add that vendor. I'll say tab. We're going to add that vendor. And we're not going to add any detail. We'll just save the name. So we'll save that and tab through this. We could have the same terms. We could apply terms to the net 30. On the 28th, we're going to keep the bill date again. The due date, once again, we could take from directly the bill or have the terms determine it. And then on the other side, we're going to say the category or the account. If we select it, we may not have one that we really want here uh, that fits. We might put it into utilities, but the internet may be utilities. I usually just think of uh, the gas and the electric. We might want to group more stuff in the utilities, have less expenses or have more expenses, more detail. It's a trade-off between the amount of detail we want and uh, the, the time it takes to make that detail and to analyze that detail. So in this case, I think it's worth breaking out. I like to break out the, the amount we're paying for internet. So I'm gonna make another account, be very spe specific with it and just call it internet expense. So we'll call it internet expense and I'm gonna say tab. We're gonna create this account. It's gonna be an, expen an expense type of account. I will pull it, we will put it under the category of utilities. So the subcategory will be utilities. So we'll say utilities and it's going to be internet expense. That will be the name. It's not a sub account. We're going to keep it as is. That's another option, by the way, of course, if you think it should be a sub account of utilities, maybe then you can list out the utilities and that's one way you can uh, have a report that has less detail. It's just having the full account and then not showing the sub accounts or then use the sub accounts to give more detail. But uh, again, you have to manage the sub accounts in order to do that. So if you get into the sub accounts, just realize it takes more time to manage, although it can be nice to see reports with that kind of detail. So then we're gonna say save and close. There we have that and the amount will be 180. So we're gonna put 180 in the amount and then once again, we're going to say save and new and see what else we have on the bills. Next is going to be our electric bill. So we're going to say that's from Edison for us. Edison's our electric company. So we're going to say Edison is our electric bill tab. And the terms, once again, we could add the terms. We're going to say the date is the 28th again. And if we scroll down, we're going to say the account. Now the electric is usually one that I think of as utilities. So I think that's one that would basically have the utilities electric and gas. So usually the two that I think of as utilities now breaking out other things like the internet, like uh, the phone bill, but that's just a convention. Uh, you could, and there's no, there's no set rule. There's no complete standardization here. It just really depends if you have a lot, if you're in a business that uses a lot of gas bill or whatever, what, for whatever reason versus electric, you may want to break those two things out <laughs> so that you can see uh, what, what the difference is between the two and manage those. If however, you think they're not worth breaking out, then you put them together. Phone bill used to be under utilities a lot, but now at this point in time, usually a pretty significant bill, one that we might want to track significantly or uh, on its own. It could be matched up with the internet. The bill on the phone, internet might be a package kind of deal grouped together, or we might want more detail in it. So it really just the, uh, the expenses, how many expenses we want really determines, is determined business by business. What do we want to show? What do we want for the detail? How do we want to use this report for decision making? We're going to put it under utilities. We're going to say 648. Remember that if we were writing a check because we wrote a check last month when we paid Edison, it would then populate the utilities for us. So we'd be able, if we do a bill next time or a check, it will say, hey, this is what you did last time when you wrote a check or a bill to Edison. You posted it to utilities. Do you want to do that again? And it'll make it a lot easier because we don't have to rethink where everything is going. We can just say, yeah, I want, to, I want it to go to utilities and just change the amount to the proper amount for the current bill. Of course, the journal entry here will be an increase to accounts payable and an increase to the expense account of utilities expense. So let's go ahead and save and close this time. I'm going to select a drop up and save and close. Then let's take a look at our reports. So we're going to go to the reports on the left side. First, starting with that favorite report of ours, the balance sheet report. Balance sheet report. We're going to change the dates up top. Those dates being 010119 to 123119, January through December 2019, and run that report. If we then scroll down to the accounts payable section, there it is. 
2393 if we select that item then we scroll down we see our bills on 228 spectrum edison verizon those being our three bills we can also see the split account where the other side is going all expenses in our case the internet the utilities and the telephone if we select any of those items we then of course see the related bill closing this back out we're going to open up our other report which is going to be the profit and loss so let's let's go back to the balance sheet first i'm going to go back to the balance sheet <laughs> and now we'll open up the other report right clicking on the account up top on the tab up top so that we can duplicate this we're going to duplicate this item i'm going to pull this one to the right so the one that says balance sheet is on the left i'm going to close this one all together balance sheet on the left this one on the right where we will put the profit and loss by going to the reports on the left hand side opening up the profit and loss report going to change the dates up top from 010119 to 123119 and run that report. Scrolling down, we should then see we have the telephone. I believe that was one of them. So 725, if we select that, we see the bill for the telephone uh, expense. The other side going to accounts payable. Last time we wrote a check, you'll see. And so we did it a little bit different, more on a kind of an accrual basis this time and showing how that bill would work rather than just writing a check going back to the summary we also did one for the utilities so if we select utilities we'll see a similar item last time we wrote a check this time we wrote the bill if we scroll back up back to our report we can also run this report just for the month of february if we go to 020119 to 022819 so february february 1st to february 28th and run that report here's what we're looking like in february so we've got the income and then here's our expenses that we have entered we're still at a loss it's our second month of operations here so that's quite possible we'll see how it goes towards the end of the month now what we're going to do is actually pay those bills with the pay bill feature which in essence is a check before we do that let's go back to the balance sheet and just consider what will happen when we pay the bill What's going to happen is the accounts payable is going to go down because we no longer owe it. And the other side that's going to go down is the checking account. So let's create a new tab to do that. I'm going to right click on this tab. I'm going to right click and duplicate it again. And then we'll have another tab to work in where, where we can pay the bills. So I'm going to select the plus drop down up top in the vendors section. We just, we just entered the bill. Now we're going to pay the bills. And these, remember, aren't going to be two things that might happen side by side. We might enter the bills and then pay them at some future date. Hopefully, the best system, of course, would be to be entering the bills as we receive the bills, even though we don't plan on paying them until the end of the bill term and managing the end of the bill term with the pay bill feature. So if we go into then the pay bills, we'll see the items that we have entered. These are all the bills. We can sort them in different ways. If we, are, if we were a large company, we could have a lot in the pay bills and be managing the pay bills and determining which bills need to be paid and going through the pay bill process in terms of internal controls, which is like full-time job and could employ multiple people within that department. So here we're going to change the date up top to 0-2-28-1-9. And we're going to check off the items that we are going to pay, which we want to pay the Verizon we want to pay Edison and Spectrum, the ones that we just wrote. Now that we check these off, we can print them if we had the pre-printed checks, meaning we would just put those checks, they're already pre-printed into the printer, and then print these items uh, on those pre-printed checks using this system. We could just check them off, put those three checks into the printer, and print them using QuickBooks. That's one method. If we're just going to write the checks, then of course we can write the checks check them off, assign the check number for them so that they're properly assigned, still matching up the external check numbers to the checks that will be generated. Now we're gonna use the pay bill feature here, which means that to QuickBooks, it's a different form than a check. QuickBooks means, pay bill means, we're gonna decrease accounts payable. It means we're paying off a bill, a form of bill, not, not just a bill like any kind of bill that comes to us that is someone asking us for money for some service that they provided it means specifically a bill within quickbooks that we entered it into quickbooks as a bill increasing accounts payable and now of course we are paying the bill decreasing accounts payable and of course the other side typically going to 
the checking account. So we're going to scroll down and uh, record this and then we'll check that out. So we will save and close. Then we're going to go back to the balance sheet. Let's do that by going to the first tab balance sheet tab we're going to run the report again just to make sure it updates run that report and then if we go down to the checking account the 103352 and select that item we should have our checks that we have now written there's a little out of order because they're all on the 28th so they're going to be up here a bit note that they say pay pay uh, bill payment and then check bill payment and then check so that means that it is a check. It's just a check. And if you were to ask the bank, hey, there's a check, it's a, but this is a bill payment check. The bank wouldn't know if it's a bill payment check that cleared the bank or if it's just a normal check. Only QuickBooks knows. And it's helpful to us to know that the bill payment check means that the other side is going to accounts payable. So even though we're paying the uh, Edison, Electric, Spectrum, the cable, Verizon, the phone, it's the other side now is going to accounts payable when did we actually hit the edison the electric or utilities expense spectrum the internet expense of verizon when we entered the bill this is paying the bill so this will give us an indication of that just by that term by using this form name of the bill so then we're going to go back up top we're going to go back to our report summary we're going to scroll down to the liability of accounts payable select the 1200 scrolling down here is our pay bill once again here's our three items verizon edison spectrum and those three items are bringing down the accounts payable so that's typically going to be the case we're going to increase the accounts payable with a bill and then we pay it off with a bill payment and then we're going to increase the accounts payable with a bill and then we're going to pay it off with a bill payment this is what the accounts payable should look like notice it's, it's very standardized very easy to see most accounts actually are they're very systematic you ex you expect to go in there and know what you're going to see the one account that is not that systematic because there's so much activity in it is of course cash cash has got stuff going in and out of cash all the time related to every cycle that we deal with however every other account you you'll see a pattern like this and you can start to say hmm this is what it should look like <laughs> and when and when something doesn't fit that pattern we can easily start to pick up hmm i can't check this off this checks off to here this checks off to here you know we should see this time this doesn't check off well that means it's the ending balance it's not checked off everything else ties out and that's going to be the case this kind of pattern is is of course the case with most accounts for more accounting information and accounting courses visit our website at accountinginstruction.info